never thought it would be inevitable that people would start treating me differently. I never thought that. And I want people to look at me as Kim, not as, you know, the girl in the wheelchair with the rare disease. I don't want that. I don't, I, I would prefer to be Kim with the freckles rather than Kim with the free drinks. <laughs> Friedrich's ataxia is a genetic disease that causes degeneration in the nervous system. It is devastating because it affects young children who are previously very healthy and suddenly they become more and more unsteady. They ultimately need the use of a wheelchair and tragically their life is shortened. My favourite one is the Nicky Hopkins one. Nine-year-old Emma was recently diagnosed with Friedrich ataxia. In every other way, for now, her life is almost normal. Well, she was very early walker, so she was she was away before. She walked at nine year. months, and she was always active and always into everything. And then, from around about the age of five, five and mm. a half, she was on a she was on her bike, and she kept being quite uneasy and it was just a, a difficult, we, we didn't know what it was, we thought maybe that she's just, that she just lost, lost the confidence. confidence in it. You yeah. just put these things, you can always find excuses when they're kids. And this is mine, I have. They're good sisters, they're good mates, um, they fight of course like all kids but um, you know Lauren's what, six? that Lauren helps Emma every day with her school bag at school. Mm. Walks her into school with her just so that she's, uh, yeah, so she gets in there okay. Yeah, no, they are, they are good mates. Um, Emma's got a good support yeah. in, in her sister. Even though she'll probably tell you that she's not. <laughs> no, they are, they're good. They're good friends. As a teenager, 43-year-old Kim nursed her brother through Friedrich ataxia. Then, at 20, she herself was diagnosed with the disease. Total confusion. I had my whole life mapped out. I didn't tell my parents. I waited for my sister to get back from England and told her and said, you could tell mum and dad. Just couldn't do it to them. So I decided to leave my job and go to Queensland. One day, when I was up living in Noosa, I, thought, I went to bake something. I thought, oh, blow around a flower. So I ran down to the um, supermarket. I was going along the aisle oh, trying to find a flower, and there were two old ladies, and it was about 9.30 in the morning. So I found the flower and I walked over and got it. And one old lady said to the other, oh, did you see that? She's come out from probably one of those night things. And look how drunk she is. I just stood there and I've gone, but I'm not drunk. Oh, she didn't sound drunk. I just put the flower back on the shelf and went home. This is Monash Medical Centre where we hold the Friedrich Ataxia Clinic once every month. The Friedrich Ataxia Clinic we run is the only one of its kind in the world. It is a multidisciplinary clinic which is dedicated purely to Friedrich's Ataxia. The aim of our clinic is to improve quality of life. That's our number one aim and we believe we're succeeding in that. What I always tell medical students when they say it's untreatable, I say it's not untreatable. There are many treatments for Friedrich's ataxia that can improve quality of life. Treating the heart can definitely prolong life uh, and all the various therapies that are, uh, are used definitely improve quality of life. So even though we don't have a cure at the moment, there are many treatments. I don't look at a cure. 
I won't look at a cure, but I would love something to stabilise it. I really would. That would be heaven sent. There's absolutely hope. The gene for Freak's ataxia was only discovered 10 years ago, but in that time we now understand what happens in cells when the, uh, the gene fault happens. And so that therapies are being developed that are based on understanding of what's happening in the genes, what's going wrong. And so there are now six or seven drugs around the world that are being tested to see if they benefit people from Freedix ataxia. This was not even dreamed of 10 years ago. Australian medical researchers are among the world's best. And the team from the Bruce Lafroy Centre at Melbourne's Murdoch Children's Research Institute are at the forefront of international efforts to find treatments for Friedrich ataxia. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Just how fast we get there depends on resources. So we, we, we hope to start clinical trials, that is um, trying them out on uh, actual people with the condition in hopefully in the next um, two years or so. And if anything proves fruitful, um, hopefully they might be in use perhaps five years or, or a little bit after that. But it, it, it's always very difficult to put an exact um, time frame on some of the work that we do. It's very much harder to get funding for rare diseases, but as you know from Kim and Emma, they deserve to have their disease researched and cures found for their disease as much as someone with a common disease. We've got the knowledge, we've got the, the researchers, We've got the people on our side, we just, it's like anything, you need money all the time. It comes back to finances. This is the rare diamond. It is on us. I mean, it, it's not, it doesn't change your day-to-day -day perception. I mean, we're more, I'm, I'm, we're more so looking, you know, five, ten years down the track when this is going to be really taking hold of her and stopping her doing from what a normal teenager would do. And that's, that's the parts that really pain us. We have to be strong for them, you know, you have to. They're, we're the parents, they're the kids. Mm. So, got to keep things as normal as we can for them, yeah. don't we? Yeah, for sure. At the end, I might have to be in a wheelchair when I get older. And how do you feel about that? Well, yes. that's okay. It's okay? Yeah. Yes. You 